Hello everybody, Raven Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of How to Build. This is a series where I teach you guys how to build my characters that I've created in For Honor Legends, or just characters I've created for fun, or campaign characters, or lore characters, all that fun stuff. And today, I am answering a fan request to teach you guys how to build Theodora, one of my warden characters who does have lore, I just haven't written a legend about it. After I released a video where I showed you guys me playing as her build, I had quite a few people saying that they wanted to know her lore and know how to build her, and I decided, you know what? Yeah, I'll teach you guys how to build her. I'll show you guys what to do. It's actually super easy, guys. It's real easy to build her, so I hope you guys enjoy. Let's not waste any time and get right into how to build Theodora. So first of all, starting with the armor, pretty, pretty simple. You want the Imperious Helm, the Imperious Chest, and the Imperious Arms. Literally, I started building this Warden design as soon as this armor set released because I absolutely love this armor set. It looks really, really good. I think it's one of the better armor sets for Warden out there, so I definitely recommend the Imperious set. Okay? Okay. For the weapon, things are going to get a little bit more complicated. You want the Guy Lane Blade. The Guy Lane Blade. I like this blade because it looks a little battle-worn. You can see little traces of scarring on it from battle, but it also has a very nice finish to it. It has a very um, almost Damascus-style finish, a very nice pattern to it, and it's also a thick blade, which I think will give it more uh, longevity and let it last longer, but it'll also add some heft to it. So again, the Guy Lane Blade... For the hilt, you want the Garion hilt. The studs in it help for grip, and I also think it looks just rustic enough to go along with the old blade kind of finish. This is very different from the Winged Victory one, which is very, very ornamental. This one's more of an old-fashioned, this, this weapon has seen a lot of use kind of hilt. And then finally, the Aragon Guard. Now, this one I feel really fits well with the overall rustic look, but adds just enough flair to it to make it stick out. That nice ruby in the center makes it stick out, makes it pop a little bit. The skulls on either side have a really nice finish to it. I think overall, this weapon just looks very solid. I think this is a very nice looking sword for a warden to carry. It looks rustic. It looks like it's been used before. It looks like it's seen battle, but at the same time, it looks like something you would expect a seasoned knight to carry. Something, something almost regal, I would say, which is going to suit it very well. All right. All right. Just to run through it one more time. Imperious Helm, Imperious Chest, Imperious Arms, Guy Lane Blade, Gary and Hilt, Aragon Guard. You got all that? Excellent. All right. Let's move on. So next... For traits, I mean, you, you want the female if you want to go for the full-on Theodora, but if you want Theodore, go with the male. It's not going to matter here. I just went with Theodora. Skin color is not going to matter. You're not going to be able to see your skin. I just went with default. Okay, next, ornament. Absolutely none. You do not need an ornament for this. We're not doing that. We're not doing that for this. For the material, surprise, surprise, iron is fine. I honestly just go with iron. I think it looks good because what we're building here, guys, the idea behind this character is we're going for a classic Crusader era knight. I'm not looking for something super fantasy or super fantastical. I'm just looking for a simple knight. So the two you can really go with are iron or silver. Those are the two that I recommend. Silver gives a nice sheen to it, but iron has a very nice old worn look. So you could go with either silver or iron. I just go with iron. It looks good. It looks really good. Okay. All right. Now for the head, nothing. Leave it as it is. For the left shoulder, you can leave it as it is. For the right shoulder, you can leave it as it is. <laughs> for the back, okay, now we're finally getting somewhere. For the back, you want the Crusader cross symbol. You get that by owning year one Heroes Bundle Pass. You need to get that to get this cross. But make sure you have that cross on the back. You want to have a Crusader style cross, okay? And then for the, oh, sorry. Then for the standards, you want the Banner Line 1 paint pattern. And you want the Royal Lion symbol. The Royal Lion symbol, which you get right off the bat at level one. Like I said, super easy. You, you, you have everything you really need for this. However, when we get to the color, it's going to be a little different, okay? You do need something special for this. For the color scheme, you need the Bloody Hidden Blade, which you get from the For the Creed event Elite Outfit, because you want that combination of black and red to create the Crusader look. Now, honestly, what you're really looking for here is any combination that will give you the white and red, the white outline on the red cross. So you could do pastels, which you get at Reputation 28. You could do pastels, but if you do pastels, hold on, let me show you. If you do pastels, notice how suddenly 
the uh, symbol on the stand the the standard colors change. So you'll have to get rid of the paint pattern altogether on the standards in order to make that work. But if you do not have the Crusader Cross. Um, for the for the Creed paint pattern, then you can use this color, okay? You can just get rid of that paint pattern on the standards and it will still work, okay? Okay. All right, we cool? We cool. Okay, so like I said, pretty stinking easy to build. Now let's go into the other aspect. So for her feet, I want Conquer because she is a crusader. She is going on a crusade. That is her lore. There is a She is on a pilgrimage. She is on a crusade, and that will be explained later on in her lore. So Conquer, I thought, worked. Inspire and Morale Booster are gimmies. She's got to have those because she inspires those around her. She lifts up the weak. She lifts up the downtrodden. She's the kind of person who... like Before anyone compares her to Ruth, let me be clear. Ruth is someone who wants to find her purpose in this world. She wants to feel like she has a place to belong. Theodora knows her belonging, but she is trying to uplift the downtrodden and the weak and the poor and the um, broken. She's this kind of person who sees herself on a righteous journey. So Morale Booster and Inspire are definitely good ones to give to her. And I gave her a second win because in her lore, you will see her constantly get back up time and time and time again. She's kind of this person who refuses to stay down. But if you want to give her something else, Puno Mortis is fine. Puno Mortis is just fine. Okay? Okay. Now... For executions, spinning decapitation, use it or lose it, just because, damn, that's a good execution. Manos manum sakat. And a moment of silence. I feel like all these work because spinning decapitation is a very quick and easy execution to move through a field of battle. Use it or lose it is excellent as a parry repost system, and I think that that looks really cool with a warden. Manas Manam Sakat shows her austere nature and the fact that she will always remain poised even when she knows she's won. And a moment of silence shows her duty and respect to even her enemies as she will show in her battle in her lore. Now for emotes... I gave her victory and recognition because honestly, I'll be real here, guys. I'll be real. You can give her whatever you want for free for free roam. As long as the emotes you give her fit within her personality of being an austere and righteous individual, you can give her whatever you want for combat. I gave her blade homage and mock de virtute, which I think again, go into that. And I also like the blade homage because it looks like she's making a cross symbol that I think that's just good. For signature, I gave her for the hilt. I think that looks really good. It's it's also a little cocky. It's also a little cocky. Like, just reach out like, you want this? No, you can't have it. Sorry, you lose. So I thought that would work. You can also go Allegiance to Ashfeld. That would be fine too. And you could also go with On My Honor. Any of those would work very well for her because to her, she sees herself on a crusade. She is on a pilgrimage. All right. And lastly, for effects, nada, zilch. You don't need anything. No effects required. The, she is perfect as is. And there you go, guys. That is how you build Theodora the Crusader. I really did like building her. And honestly, she's super easy to build because I'll tell you the truth. Here's what happened. So when I got early access to the Sun Wukong event where this whole armor set came out, when you get early access, you're given a big steel allowance with which to get like effects and executions and emotes that you want to try out. And so I spent a butt ton of my uh, steel allowance on this for the limited access. And since I had such limited things to use, I didn't have my full reputation on her. I had to be creative and try to just build what I could based on that. So with very limited options, I had very limited to work with when building her. So I just had to work with what I had. And it's amazing. Guys, look, I'll be real. I'll be real with you. The only thing I had to pay money for in order to make this work was the For the Creed event elite outfit. That was it. That was all I had to pay money for. The rest of this... I got just from grinding and just moving up in the level. Genuinely, I think that one of the problems we see is a lot of people try to build these super fancy, elaborate designs for their heroes because they pay out the wazoo for these outfits and illustrious outfits and effects and all these things. And I think you can make a really cool looking, awesome character with minimal cost. 
There wasn't a lot that went into this. It actually, I think it looks really, really good for what it is. And honestly, it helps the fact that, you know, you just got to be a little creative. You got to open your mind to the possibilities. So what do you guys think of Theodora's design? Do you like it? Will you be making her yourself? Let me know down in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about her lore. Are you excited to hear it? Do you want to hear what kind of crusade she's going on? Do you want to hear the full story? Because here's the thing. Lots of people have been asking me, are my characters in Ferran or Christian? Not all of them are, but this one... Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Take care.